I met Curtis over in Piccadilly Circus, so I'm just getting set up at the minute. To start off with, I decided to go with the Sigma 14 to 24. It's one of my favorite lenses, so it only made sense that I put it on this camera to see what he could do. After getting set up and having a quick chat, Curtis wanted to get some panning shots, so he went over the road to start doing that. I stayed on this side and was just getting a few warm-up shots. This was the first one that I got here. There was nothing special in this one. Obviously, warm-up shots, they never are. I stayed on the corner for a few more minutes, just observing, seeing what was coming along, what was going past. I spotted one of these biker taxis coming down the road. It's a fairly similar composition to the first one, although what I did like about this one was how the colours of the bike was illuminating the road. After reviewing the photo, it was good to notice that the person that was in the back was looking directly to the camera, and the guy that was pedalling, I assume he did see the camera at one point, but obviously he turned his head back to the road to see where he was going. So yeah, I like this shot. I've crossed back over the road now, so I'm on the same side as Curtis. I was gonna join him to do a couple of panning shots myself. There was a shot that I wanted to try at this crossing, but the conditions weren't right for what I wanted to get. Either way, I just grabbed this shot here. It's not the best shot. There's something here that will probably come back to another day. So I don't often do a lot of panning shots, but every now and again, I like to try and throw them in there. Recently, when I have been doing them, I think they look a lot better when they're shot in landscape rather than vertical. So this might be the way forward when it comes to doing panning shots. If you do panning shots yourself, how do you find it when you're doing it in landscape versus vertical? Coming up now is an image that I feel had a lot of potential. I don't know how I even managed to spot them, but somehow I did notice them. What drew me to them was the fact that all of them were wearing similar headwear. But the one thing that puts me off with this image is the person that's right in the front there. I think if he wasn't there at all, it would have been a much stronger image. Something else that you're gonna notice in this POV is the fact that I'm using black and white in some of these edits. Long and short of it, if you see me using black and white, it's because I feel that the color that's in the photo just isn't helping it whatsoever. For some reason, this is a shot that I actually like. I don't know what it is about it, whether it's because of the black and white, because of the way that the people are looking, but I do like this one. If I took a couple of steps to the right, just to capture the people's faces a bit more to where they were looking, I think it could have been just that little bit better. So now we're coming up to another one of those images where I wanted to try something. And the idea was, as the bus was driving past, was to try and capture the splash from the tire. Obviously where we're standing right next to the road, buses were moving a little bit more into the middle to avoid hitting us basically. So that never worked out and that's gonna be another one to try at a later date. Can't even lie on this one. This is an image that I saw Curtis take and I thought, do you know what, it, that looked fucking sick, so I'm gonna grab that one as well. Usually when I am out with people, I don't aim to get the same sort of shots as them, and I will veer away from basically having very, very similar images, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. We've now finished shooting in Piccadilly, and we start heading over to Central Cinema. This is another popular location that people go to to get shots of the neon lights. I don't know what it is with Piccadilly, I've always found it a difficult area to shoot for some reason. This might be because of my style of photography, I'm normally doing more architecture and looking for people within architecture, and for some reason here, it just never really fits. It's somewhere that I do need to explore a bit more and see what I can actually come up with. This is one of those funny type of shots that just seems to fall into place. As you'll see, I used the pedestrian crossing button for a bit of foreground. I might be reaching a little bit on this one, but I think the casing on the pedestrian crossing button creates a bit of a leading line to the guy that's in the middle of the frame. And also the shadows create a bit of a frame as well, which is kind of drawing your eye into the center. This is just one of those images that I really, really like. Everything about it just screams street photography to me. One of my favorites from the evening. Now we're heading into Chinatown and this is another one of those places that I've struggled to get good images from. I don't know what it is about the place. It just seems to be another one of those kryptonite areas for me. One thing I can say is that whenever I've gone to Chinatown, I've always gone with people. And I think it's one of them places that you just need to go on your own and take your time and chill out in. Walking about with other photographers, I think people notice you more and they're a bit more wary of what's going on. So that might be the reason why. We're coming up to the last couple of images of the night now. 
as we was walking through, spotted these two people sitting down having dinner and whatnot. Again, the colours weren't really all that, so we had to put it into black and white, and this is how it came out. So now we're at the final image of the night. Literally, as I press the shutter button, this guy looks over directly at me. The only thing that I feel would have made this image a lot better would have been if there was less people in there. I think they're too distracting and it takes away from that centre subject. 